Look guys, I'd love to try and put a positive spin on what I've just watched, but I can't, I just can't. Last night's Raw was a big bag of bolo, but we did learn one thing. Kevin Owens' favourite musical act is not Shania Twain, it's Eiffel 65. Because blue. Get it? Blue, blue like the port of- oh god. Just roll the titles. To start on a sombre note, former WWE Tough Enough winner Matt Capitelli unfortunately passed away last week having lost a long, long battle with brain cancer. Now under normal circumstances you'd expect Raw to open up with a little memorial graphic, maybe even a wee highlights package, but there was nothing last night. Nothing at all. Now it's a shame we have to point this out, but WWE do need to be called out here. Noel Capitelli was never the biggest name in the company, he never got out of developmental, but he was under contract when he suffered his first brain tumour and that brought an end to his career. It's absolutely ghoulish that WWE couldn't find a way to work him into the show, even if it was just an opening graphic. So here's the thing about Roman Reigns character. It sucks. This guy's basically Gene Snitsky at the moment because all he does whenever something goes wrong is blart out it wasn't my fault and run away from his problems. When he lost to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, Lesnar blamed management. When he lost to Brock again at the Greatest Royal Rumble, he semi-understandably blamed the referee. Last week, when him and Bobby Lashley were facing the revival, it was somehow Lashley's fault. And last night, when Bobo deservedly walked out on the big goof after being treated like dirt the whole night, Reigns treated it like it was some kind of top 10 anime betrayal. It's bad, really bad. But at least he isn't punting babies out of the ring. Yet. Bloody Snitsky. Dr. Shelby's back and WWE are doing their absolute best to suck the life out of this Bailey vs Sasha Banks feud. No shade on the good doctor who was tremendous again last night, but yeah, this story really isn't what it should be. Still, there was a nice little easter egg in last night's segments as Dr. Shelby had a photo of Kane and Daniel Bryan hung up on his office wall. Good to see he hasn't forgotten where he came from. Liv Morgan wrestled Ember Moon in a very okay match last night, but while the Riot Squad member definitely still needs a bit of polish between the ropes, my god, was that one hell of a sell on the Eclipse. Liv sprung her whole body forward like a maniac, then went totally limp, really selling the move's impact and making Ember look like a million dollars in victory. Little touches like that go a long, long way, so fair play to her. Aside from that dope with the giant MAGA banner in the front row that was duly confiscated halfway through, it was a relatively dull night as far as fan signs go, but this Vader one did keep cropping up throughout. Now this wouldn't normally be particularly notable, but given that it came just a few days after it was leaked that Vince McMahon had banned announcers from even mentioning Vader on air, it's kind of cool. It's a really weird stance because while Vader isn't necessarily a WWE legend, he is without question a wrestling legend and he deserves acknowledgement. Good on that fan, but bad on Vince. At one point last night, Michael Cole blurted out that while Ronda Rousey is currently suspended from Raw, that doesn't apply to pay-per-views. Now this was just an extension of an interview that Rousey did and was uploaded to YouTube last week, but bloody hell, it doesn't half telegraph her next move. You might as well just come out and broadcast the script for the Raw Women's title match in advance, you bunch of dumbasses. There's no such thing as a things you may have missed drinking game because getting tonate on a school night is irresponsible, but if there was you'd be taking a sip right now because here's the conga line. You'll have noticed this poor dickhead getting absolutely skidooshed by Mojo Rawley last night and with the bump he took he had to be a professional. Well, he was. This was Jassy, an independent wrestler who currently works the Midwest circuit, but more importantly trains under Seth Rollins at the Black and Brave Training School. Cool. Speaking of Mojo Rawley, I know it's cool to rip this guy to pieces and I myself have certainly been guilty of that from time to time, but the guy's really been doing some quite good work lately and it's really flying under everyone's radars. Ultimately he needs to be feuding with someone a little bit better than No Way Jose, but Mojo cut a decent promo last night, the beatdown was really well executed and his offense actually looks like it hurts. It'll take a long, long time to shake off what remains of that hype bro stink, but he's putting in good work at the moment and that deserves a thumbs up. You go, Mojo! Last night's main event and show closing angle formed much of the discussion surrounding last night's Raw and understandably so, they were absolutely terrible. But regardless of whether you think Kevin Owens has been buried or not, his choice of attire was pretty nifty. Kevin Owens came out wearing his Fight Anyone t-shirt, then proceeded to run away from Braun Strowman, hide himself in a toilet and get covered in blue gloop. It was a pretty dismal scene, but for his character, that's actually perfect. 
Now I miss the prize fighter of old too, but that's not who he is anymore. He's a coward, he's a chicken sh Keel, he runs away from things. So the irony of him wearing this t-shirt and then running away is absolutely delicious. Well, maybe delicious isn't the right word for a guy who just got chucked around a portaloo, but you get what I mean. And finally, Braun Strowman. One week after trashing Kevin Owens car, the big lad was back to bullying his victim again, trapping him in that portaloo, dragging him onto the stage, and then skadooshing him off of it. Now aside from the needless damage to Richard Pictures' favourite hangout spot, it left KO absolutely humiliated and it closed the show on a scene almost as dismal as that Bobby Lashley sister segment. Isn't this all just a little bit unnecessary? Do we really need to have Braun presented as this domineering bully? I like the guy and I really want to root for him, but it's hard when he's presented like this. Now this is an age old problem with WWE babyfaces, but I swear to God, if WWE somehow contrived to ruin Braun Strowman, I'll probably complain about it on a YouTube video. That'll show them. So that's it, our journey through this particularly dopey episode of Raw is over and done with. Head on down to the comments section, let us know what you thought of the show, and any easter eggs or hidden gems that you picked up on as well. And once you've done that, head over to whatculture.com forward slash WWE and check out some great articles, including the one that this very video series is based on. Once you've done that, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and maybe check out some of the videos currently swirling around my big bald head. As always, foe, I've been Andy, and I'll see you later.